Good morning and welcome to worship. And what a beautiful, beautiful day out there. It just makes you want to smile and jump with joy and be really happy about it. Let us start our service with the land acknowledgement. As settlers, we respectively acknowledge that Knox United Church Durham is on a traditional territory of the Anishabek Nation, the people of the Three Fires Confederacy, known as the Ojibwa, Ottawa, and the Potawatomi Nations. We give thanks to the Chippewa of Saugeen, Chippewas of Nawash, now known as the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, as the traditional keepers of this land. Please join me for the lighting of the Christ candle. The light in all of life, shine bright light, shine upon us, filling us with your warmth and peace. Please join me for the call to worship. The word of life spoke so we could hear the alleluias of the angels. The word of life reached out so we could touch the hope which heals us. The word of life walked out of death's dread tomb so we could follow him into life forever. Let's pray together. Emptier of tombs, you raised Jesus from the grave so all fears might be banished, so the locked doors of our hearts could be flung open, so our quivering lips could declare what we have seen and heard. Bright glory of God, as you stood in the middle of your friends on that first Easter night, come among us now in this time and place showing us that death and sin no longer stand in the way of our life with you. Breath of peace, strengthen us so we may stand with all who fear life. Take our hand in yours so we may serve all who are broken with grief. Inspire us to share the grace which has been breathed into our very souls. God in community, holy in one, Hear our prayers as we worship you now. Amen. The hymn is Thine is the Glory. Life 
is not without thee, aid us in our strife. Make us more than conquerors through thy deathless love. Bring us safe through Jordan to thy home above. Thine is the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou or death hast won. How often have we heard the good news of forgiveness and restoration, yet we are still reluctant to believe? God offers us new life, yet we are afraid to let go of the old. Let us confess our doubts and fears to the one who wants to make us whole. Let's pray together. We use a lot of words, gracious God, but do little to turn them into deeds. Instead of being one heart and soul, we choose sides and form groups of folks just like us. Blessed with great grace, we have trouble sharing it with those who need it the most. Forgive us, God of love. Forgive us as we step out of our shadows into your light. Restore us as we reveal our brokenness. Hear us as we proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and our God. This is the good news. We have to declare. God leads us out of the shadows to walk in the light of Christ. This is the word we have heard. Our faithful God forgives our sins and raises us to new life. Thanks be to God. Amen.
right, I'd like to have our young people come on down as we sing, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. Tell me the stories of Jesus I love to hear Things I would ask Him to tell me If He were here Scenes by the wayside Tales of the sea Stories of Jesus Let me hear how the children stood round his knee, and I shall fancy his blessing resting on me. Words full of kindness, deeds full of grace. Place. Well, good morning. Oh, we got some more coming on down. We can wait. Come on. Lots of time. Absolutely. Don't even, it doesn't even have to come to the front pew. Just sit in one of the halfway pews. That's fine. Yeah. Well, good morning to you all. Now, I have a question for you. What's that mean up there? Any idea? It's a cross. And that good, uh, you're right, that good died on, and that, but the cross is empty. There's nothing there. And that's why it's got white on it, to remind us that the cross is empty. But it went beyond that. It went beyond that. Jesus would be on the cross, but it is not anymore. But something very strange happened. Very, very strange. This, do you remember what happened? The ladies went and uh, the women went and he rose from the dead and the women went to the tomb and was Jesus there? No, he wasn't there. The tomb was empty. Okay. That night, Jesus came, Jesus did something very different. He came back. And he walked through a wall and he entered a room that was locked and his disciples and all the people were saying what? this is not possible can't be can you walk through a wall? no you can't yeah that's right because Jesus is special but he's even more special in another way because what he did is when, it, when they all said when his followers all said this can't be he said just a minute I'm going to give you something special I'm going to give, breathe on you and give you the gift of the Spirit. Now, I'd like you to do something. Hold your hand up in front of your face like this and just blow into your hand gently. You hear the noise? You hear the noise? That's what Jesus did to his followers. He blew into them gently. And when he did that, he said, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. And at that point, that point, they all, they all said, okay, what's next? Well, wait a minute, that's the, right, that's the next part of the story. So you've got to remember, tomb is empty. Nobody could believe it. Jesus walks into the room and says, hello. And then he says, receive the Holy Spirit. And he blew into all of them, his breath. And that gave them the power, the strength to follow Jesus into some amazing places, which will be, we'll get into again a little later on. Okay? All right. Let's pray. Thank you, gracious God, for reminding us that you come not just in physical presence, but in breath, in wind. And you give us life, new life. 
We know the tomb's empty, but we wait for the rest of the story. Amen. And off you go to Sunday school. this morning is from John 20, 19 to 23. Jesus appears to the disciples. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the word of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Let us keep silence for a moment. O Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts, be acceptable in your sight. Amen. If there is a a poignant moment, at least for me, in the narrative of Holy Week, it comes on Good Friday in the passage that we read here, which is the denial of Jesus. When Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the female servants of the high priest came by, and she saw Peter warming himself. She stared at him and said, You were also with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt, and the cock crowed. And the female servant, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then, after a little while, the bystanders said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean and you talk like one. But he began to curse and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed, for the second time. And then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. You may recall the libretto from Jesus Christ Superstar, the Weber and Rice Broadway musical, which was basically an adaptation of the New Testament. No matter which version you remember from the original Broadway presentation to the movie to the more recent presentation where Alice Cooper, of all people, plays Pontius Pilate, Peter, caught in his lie, shouts to his accusers, I don't know him! And I have to say, this was one of my most profound experiences in my Holy Land tour many years ago when I sat in the garden of the house of Caiaphas, the high priest, where tradition says all of this happened. I had been through the house of Caiaphas, the high priest, in the basement, which is a jail. And tradition says this is where Jesus was, would have been imprisoned. And the gardens that surround it are very plain, a bit rocky, kind of a gathering place as opposed to a an ornamental garden. And at that moment, that helped me to see how easily I or any one of us could be Peter. And when pushed, we could also say, I don't know him. And the story continues. But it was the evening on that day, the first day of the week, John does something very interesting in the reading that we heard this morning. He connects, he makes a timeline that is quite intriguing because he says, on the first day of the week, not a week later, 
Not the third, fourth, or fifth day a week of the week, but the first day of the week. And that only jumps out at you if you remember our reading from the Easter readings, the Easter lections, which says this. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. Now, according to John, the timeline was not extended. It was very immediate. The women went to the tomb on the first day of the morning, day of the week, we would call it Sunday. And the tomb was empty. And they met in Mark's gospel someone, uh, a young man who said, he is not here, he will be in Galilee. Galilee." And, okay, we're left with this puzzle. And then in the next moment in the gospel of John, we hear John saying, on the first day of the week, which means the time between morning and night was nothing more than a few hours. It was nothing to do with going to Galilee. That's, trust me, that's down the road. But here we have empty tomb. What's going on? Go back and find the rest of the disciples. Everyone's crowded into the upper room. The door's locked. No one can get in. And all of a sudden, Jesus appears. Same day. He doesn't leave them alone. You would think that, well, he's dead. Well, not Jesus. And perhaps the disciples share their misguided viewpoints, the misguided viewpoints of, they find in the Gospel of Luke, who don't believe the women witnesses. Their loss. And instead of celebrating and looking for the newly risen one whom the women have testified they have seen, they're cringing with fear, locked away, hidden, fearful of the guards and indeed the women in Matthew's gospel. So what does Jesus do when he appears in their midst despite locked doors and blocked ears who can't seem to get the story straight or who are so fearful they don't know what they're doing? And this is where it gets really interesting. He does not do what is expected. I mean, here's Peter. He has denied Jesus three times. He's cut off the ear of one of the, the high priest's servants. Here he's got Judas, who's dead. I mean, this is a lot of turmoil and chaos. And Jesus comes into the room, how we don't know. But does he berate them for abandoning him, for denying him, for betraying him? No. He doesn't even express disappointment. I have expected better of you. Instead, he takes them on a, a journey, if you will, and takes them back and brings them forward. He takes them back and brings them forward. And what he begins with is not, you fools, or I told you so. How many experiences does that echo of our own? None, perhaps, in our own lives. But no, Jesus begins it in a different way. He walks in and he says, shalom, peace be with you. And he uses the gesture of the original kiss of peace. Shalom. And one of the things you have to remember is when you hear that word, there is something far more than just a greeting. The word shalom actually has a much deeper meaning here. It, it's it's kind of like trying to tease out the understanding, the cultural understanding of a word in a foreign language that we who speak English don't quite get. You see, to be in shalom with someone is to be in a place of equality and balance 
and calm. There is no place in the condition of shalom for resentment or envy or even unpaid debts. And Jesus greets his disciples with this word of peace for two purposes. He's saying, we're all right, you and I. Yeah. Stuff has happened. But shalom, we're all right. I'm all right. No matter what has happened, No matter what you've done or failed to do, we are okay. It is a condition of shalom with us. And that's what was. All the past is forgotten. It is set aside. It is no longer current and really, really not relevant to what is going to go on. And then Jesus does something quite remarkable. He breathes on his disciples. (laughs) That's very strange. I'm quite sure today public health would have a fit if we started breathing on each other. But if the disciples and you and I remember our scripture stories, what what was the first thing that God did to bring humans to life he breathed on them he breathed on them and we are going back to the time of creation and Jesus is saying as God breathed on you to be created I breathe on you with a new purpose I breathe on you not just to become a living being but I'm breathing on you to give you a source of new life, to inspire you, to give you the, to f- help you fulfill that calling I gave to you. I, this, is, this is the vision and purpose I have for you, and I breathe into you that new life. By the way, in case you didn't know it, breathing is one of the characteristics of the state of life. I mean, if you're not breathing, you're dead. And what's the first thing you do when you encounter someone who is injured? You check to see if they're breathing. Are they breathing? And, and, you know, that's one of the marks of living. If they're not, then, well, there's some work to be done. It also means you're not a corpse. So all of a sudden, this Jesus breathing on his disciples is a sign that he is not a corpse. He's not dead. He's breathing. And he's breathing not just oxygen, but resurrection. The gift of the Holy Spirit that comes through that breath should come as no surprise. Jesus has been promising this gift of the Holy Spirit all the way along, but the disciples were either not listening or too distracted to listen. John 14, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides in you and he will be in you. They didn't get it then, but all of a sudden, it's as plain as day. Jesus breathed on them, abides in them, and is in them through the Spirit. The Spirit is present within the disciples and, by the way, with us. And this is what resurrection means. We have that breath of life. It is part of us. We have been given that gift of the Holy Spirit. But what's even more is we have the gift of shalom. Peace be with you. And peace with all of you. It is okay. We begin again. And we all have work to do. 
the work of shalom. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, may the breath of your Spirit work within us, that as we are born of water and the Spirit, we may understand that breath of life. And may it enrich us, and may it call us, may it tease us, may it strengthen us, as we live in your way. Amen. To him is, O Master, let me walk with thee. Let us present our tithes and our offerings for the work of the Lord. As we offer our gifts to you, loving God, remove any doubts about how they might be used as you offer food to the hungry, hope to the despairing, joy to the grieving, and peace to the broken. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As God's people, let us pray. 
As we lift our hearts in prayer, gracious God, we intercede on behalf of your beloved children, recognizing the challenges and joys that shape our shared journey of faith. We pray for those who, like the disciples, may be wrestling with doubt or fear. May the light of your truth dispel the shadows, bringing reassurance and peace. Strengthen their faith and grant them the courage to walk boldly in your light. Lord, we intercede for those burdened by the weight of unconfessed sins. May the spirit of confession and repentance bring healing and restoration. Shower them with the assurance of your forgiveness, cleansing them from all unrighteousness. With those who long for genuine fellowship within the community of believers, may your spirit foster unity, understanding, and love creating a bond which reflects the beauty of the fellowship the early Christian church aspired to. May our shared life be a testimony to the transformative power of your grace. We intercede for those who feel isolated or lonely, yearning for connection. Wrap them in the arm, in the warmth of your love and guide us to be instruments of companionship and support. May we actively seek out those in need and extend the hand of friendship. Lord, we bring before you the broken relationships within our communities. Heal wounds, reconcile hearts, and inspire forgiveness. May the love that binds us together overcome any discord. And may our unity reflect the unity found in your triune nature. We pray for those facing adversity, illness, or distress. Embrace them with your comforting presence and grant them strength to endure. Use us as your church, as channels of your love, bringing practical help and compassion to those in need. In our intercession, we remember those who have not yet encountered the fullness of your light. Illuminate their hearts and minds, drawing them into the fellowship of believers. May our lives be living testimonies, inviting others into transformative relationship found in Christ. And now, Lord, we bring before you the names and situations that lie heaviest on our hearts. Lord, as we intercede before these needs, we place our trust in your boundless love and mercy. This we pray in the name of Jesus, who showed us his way in these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The hymn is Fairest Lord Jesus.
is fairer, Jesus is purer, who makes the trouble hard to sing. Fairer is the sunshine, fairer still. Go now to walk in God's light. We will tell of what we have seen in the glory of creation and in the goodness of those who love us. Now go to serve in Christ's light. We will share what we have heard in the parables about grace and in the laughter of little children. Go now to live in the Spirit's light. We will touch the broken places with healing we will stare down the bush and it changes its ways. So go, go. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.